A second year student named Kataragi Yuichi worked double shifts to raise money for his school trip. His boss asked him why he was working double shifts, and he replied that he had to raise 70,000 yen for his school trip. The old man asked him why he didn't just choose not to go. He explained that they had agreed to go together. The old man asked who they were, and he replied that they were his friends. The following day at school, Yuichi's friends were ecstatic to hear that he had managed to pay for the school trip. Shaib Makoto asked Yuichi why he didn't let him tell his parents to pay for his trip. Sawaragi started yelling at Shaib, then Mikasa Tenji told Sawaragi to let Shaib be. Later, the teacher announced that the 2 million yen they had collected for the school trip had been stolen. Sawaragi, who was standing next to Shaib at the front of the class, explained that she put the money in the locker, and someone took it. She said that if anyone took the money, they should come forward. Nobody stepped up, and the following day, Shaib and Sawaragi stopped going to school. They tried calling them too, but none of them answered. Later at night, Yuichi hears a knock. He opens the door and finds a letter from Sawaragi, telling him to meet her at the school gate as she has something to say. Yuichi runs to the school gate and finds all his friends there, including Kakatogi. Sawaragi tells him that he's late, accusing him of sending them letters. He takes Sawaragi's letter while thinking they are being set up. Suddenly, he hears his friends screaming, and he's suddenly tasered in the back, fainting after seeing his friends being dragged. Yuichi wakes up in a white room with all his friends. When a door opens, an old anime character named Manabu walks in. He explains to them that they are expected to play a game to pay off their debt of 20 million. Yuichi gets angry and starts struggling, asking where the debt has come from. Shaib takes it easy, and Tenji asks what will happen if they don't play. Manabu replies that he will let them go, but one person will pay the debt alone. However, if they work together in the game and win, the debt will be reduced. If they lose, it will increase. Manabu gives them five minutes to think and walks out. The friends decide to play the game. Manabu takes them to a room and tells them to take their name tags. The debt on it will increase to double if they show the number to one another. Since everyone has a debt of 4 million, they hide their name tags. The game starts and Manabu asks them a question to which they are supposed to answer yes or no. They put their hands in a coin toss. Manabu tells a doll called Kakiri to tell them the answer after they move the coin. Kakiri Sen raises his hands, meaning they got the answer correct. Manabu makes them read the rules on the board, stating their debt will go down by 400,000, and no speaking unless you've been chosen to answer a question. The reader of the first question was Shine. Upon hearing the question, everyone looks at one another and nods since it was a simple question. They start moving the coin, then it points to no, meaning they got the question wrong. Sawagari tries to start yelling, but they clasp her mouth, pointing at the rule. The second and the third questions, they got wrong too. It was Yuichi's turn, and upon looking at the question, he started thinking that all their friends betrayed him and Kakatogi. Thinking all the debt is to be sent to her since she's the last one, and they got to pick their own questions. Below the card, there are two options. If they get the yes answer, all the debt will be cleared, and if no, then a part of the leader's debt will be cleared. Yuichi is suspecting his friends and struggling to make a decision. Then he remembers the day he talked with Kakatogi. He decides to do what's best for him and his friends. He asks an easy question and gets a no for an answer, which means they lost. So his debt was cut in half. He's devastated as he realizes that someone is purposely trying to dump all the debt on Kakatogi's hands to end it in one round of the game. He wonders whether the fifth question is different. Then it's Kakagori's turn. The question she reads is whether they are going to remain friends. They put their finger on the coin to start pushing. Yuichi speaks up, asking whether they know the color of underwear Sawagari is wearing, and shocking his friends since Yuichi has just broken the rule, which has doubled their debt to 8 million. Yuichi told his friends that he suspects some of them for trying to put all the debt on Kakatogi, and the answer is clearly yes, so they should make the right decision. Since now his debt has been doubled, the one with the least amount of debt will be their prime suspect, which means he will follow through with the rule of giving his doubled debt to the one with the least debt. This made them choose the correct answer, which is yes, and saved Kakatobi. After the game, he starts asking them what their debt is. Everyone tells him, explaining theirs are 3 and 600. As they start making their way to the next room, Yuichi tells his friends to go while he ties his shoe. 
Still not believing his friends, he starts checking the question cards. Unfortunately, the ink they used is disappearing ink, so some of the words are gone. Sawagari arrives, asking him to tell her the person he's suspecting. Yuichi tells her that it was her and explains what put the idea in his mind. Sawaragi apologizes for suspecting him as the one who stole the money. Then she reveals that her debt had doubled when she tried to speak, and they stopped her, saying she made a little sound, so hers is 7-6 million. She promises to not doubt him ever again. They get to the next room where they are told the rules of the game. They will talk trash about their friends to clear their debt, but if their cards remain empty, they will move one box together. If one is getting badmouthed, they will move five boxes up. In the first round, they all leave their cards blank and move one box together, giving them a debt of 100 yen. In the second box, they all add 500 yen. In the third box, someone writes a card exposing that Sawaragi likes Yuichi and that Sawaragi and Tenji used to date, making Sawaragi move five boxes up and adding 500,000 yen to her debt. Tenji and Shaib start quarreling. In the next round, they wrote about Sawaragi having plastic surgery, and she moved five boxes as well. The following period, one card had trash about Kakarogi, saying she went to compensated dating. The news touches Kakagori, and she starts crying. Shaib asks to clarify whether she's saying she went on dates with adults for money. Tenji punches him, saying he should stop talking, and then to Yuichi to stay with Kokorogi. They move a distance away from them. Manabu reminds them of the rules. The one who reaches the goal will take his or her friend's debt. Meanwhile, Kokorogi has started telling Yuichi about the bullying she endured and had to do compensated dating to get money to give the bullies so they would smile at her and not bully her. He asks if they ever went far, and she replies that she never did. She ran away when the older guys tried to touch her. He tells her he has forgiven her and will always be by her side. Kakarogi tells him that for now, she wants to stay away from Sawaragi, claiming she's the one that wrote that about her. Sawaragi continues denying ever doing that. Tenji took Sawaragi away from Kakarogi and started explaining she didn't do it. He replied that he knew her too well. He knew she didn't do it. Then she explained how she met Kakagori and helped her escape her bullies. When she questioned why that was happening to her, she told her about her compensated dating, to which Sawagari promised to keep it a secret. She still claimed that she wouldn't do that to her friend. Meanwhile, Tenji stared at Shine, who was giving them a nasty stare. He smiled inwardly, thinking about how his plan was working to break the friendship so he could be there for Sawagari when she's left alone. Tenji smiled because his plan proved to be successful. He stole the money and wrote all the trash because he was everywhere, always watching and listening. Tenji planted an idea in Sawaragi's head, saying it's possible that Kakagori wrote that badmouth herself in order to get sympathy from Yuichi since she likes him. Upon hearing this, Sawaragi believes him as he looks at Kakagori, who is glued to Yuichi's side. Then it was time for their sixth period. Tenji starts walking into the locker, he closes the door, and starts thinking of who to badmouth. Realizing that his points are lower than anyone else, which would arouse suspicions, he writes and badmouths about himself. As he was walking out, he finds Yuichi slapping Sawagari for accusing Kakagori that she wrote it by herself. This made Tenji happy because a distance had been made between the two, since Yuichi clearly believes Kakagori. He smirks as he looks at their friendship being destroyed, thinking how lucky he is since he wasn't expecting it to happen when he wasn't looking. Manabu then urges them to go into the box to write. After everyone had gone and came back, Manabu takes the box and shakes it. He takes the card and tells them that there are two cards with bad mouthing, making Tenji wonder who wrote the other card. Manabu reads the first card bad mouthing Sawaragi, saying she wears men's underwear. Sawaragi immediately suspects Kakarogi. The other card states that Tenji is lying about his age. Yuichi asks if that's the truth. Tenji explains that he's a year older than them and provides his reasons, saying he dropped out and missed a year. They move boxes as always. Sawagari is many boxes away from the others, and her box tells her she will get a special chance, saying the first one to step in the box will nominate one member in the group, including themselves. The person nominated will get a bombshell expose. Manabu tells her to pick someone she trusts the most, so he knows if they are really being honest. This makes Tenji nervous because everything will be put out there and his plan will be ruined before she could pick him. 
Shibe steps forward, saying she should pick him because he realizes he has something he wants to say and wants to remain friends with them. Tenji realizes that now Shine knows why Sawaragi got her surgery. He wants to score points for himself. The truth about Shibe's dad being with every one of his assistants forcefully and covering it up is out to his friends. When Sawagari tries to forgive him, Tenji stops her, saying they should keep a distance from him since they don't know if he might be the one who committed a crime and had his dad cover it with their money and be the reason they are in the game in the first place. He cries as he watches his friends distance themselves from him. In their seventh period, Tenji is surprised to hear a card saying Shibe killed someone. Tenji, knowing he didn't write it, stares at Yuichi, realizing that he's up to something once again. Shibe tells Manabu that he didn't do it, then Yuichi tells him that he believes him and explains that he knows who the betrayer is, who wrote all the bad mouths, and has figured out a strategy to win the game. Tenji disagrees, but when everyone is on board, urging Yuichi to reveal the traitor, he replies that he won't. He tells everyone to badmouth themselves so they can reach Shibe's level and reach the goal together. Tenji challenges him, saying if his plan doesn't work, he will tell who the betrayer is. After badmouthing themselves, except Shine, Manabu comes out with 10 papers, meaning Yuichi's plan failed. He convinces him to reveal the traitor, but he replies that he was lying. He doesn't know who the traitor is. In the next period, Sawaragi is the one to reach the goal box, meaning he's one step closer to his revenge. Just as the audience thinks the game is ending like other games, Yuichi raises his hand and explains that he was lying. He knows who the betrayer is, but was just figuring out a way to get them to expose themselves. Tenji looks at him furious, as he always gets in the way of his revenge. Yuichi explains to his friends that the traitor who is trying to break their friendship is obviously the one who stole the money and paid the gam fee. To find the traitor, they should write on the five extra cards the traitor wrote earlier, saying they weren't the one who applied for the game. They urge him to go first since Sawaragi trusts him the most, and to show that he's really by her side, he should be the first to do it. He accepts the card and enters the room, fisting his hair, claiming he didn't see the plan coming. He decides to write what they want, and when the truth is out, he will play innocent and cry, saying someone blackmailed him. He walks out of the room, and his other friends write the cards. Manabu announces that the other cards are blank, except one that says he's the one who applied for the game. They all stare at him, and he goes down on his knees, crying. Yuichi walks up to him, patting his head, just as Tenji thinks Yuichi is feeling sympathetic towards him. Yuichi fists his hair, making him look at him. He says he can make all the excuses he wants later, but now he should answer the questions. Then he asks whether he's the one who applied for the game. Tenji replies that he did, tears rolling down his cheek as he wonders if it's the same Yuichi because Yuichi is staring at him with so much anger in his eyes. Since he has finally confessed on the card, he's the liar who is going to the goal box, making out of the game, and the four friends will play together. Yuichi started explaining how he set up traps for the traitor to be revealed. He explained that he actually realized in the second game and started making his friends one by one be on his side, testing their loyalty. He started with Sawaragi, giving her a note on the second round, telling her that he left his blank. So she read it when she entered the booth. He then told Kokorogi that she's on board and told her to write some bad mouth about Sawaragi, and she did. They kept fighting as an act to make the traitor believe their plan was working, then they got Shaib on board, and he was the last one. Tenji asked how he knew they weren't going to betray him. Yuichi replied, telling him to look at the three of them closely to see if there is anything different about them. Doing as asked, he noticed that their name tags are missing. Yuichi explains that he had the hand in their name tags to ensure their loyalty, and since they aren't, they handed it in without any hesitation. On the last round, he told them not to write anything on the papers, and they told Shibe last who the betrayer is because he is an idiot. Even though she told him last, he still acted weird when Tenji walked out of the booth. Recognizing that Yuichi had started with the friends he trusted the most, Tenji asked why he was the suspect and wondered if he had done something to get him figured out like that. Yuichi explained that he noticed his change in behavior when he started the fight with Shibe, accusing him of writing bad things. While Shibe doesn't know anyone's secrets since no one tells him, and he has a bad mouth, he can barely badmouth any of them he's a nice idiot. Tenji agrees, saying he put the blame on the wrong person. Then Manabu interrupts them, saying they should get back to the game. 
To save his friends, Yuichi revealed a lie he told about Shide killing someone. He had actually killed someone, and the game management did their research, turning out to be true. His friends start shunning him for that, but Tenji backed him up, saying they don't know the reason he had done it. Shaib, who is mad, tells him to shut up since he had also betrayed them. However, Yuichi saved his friends because he wanted to make someone proud who had told him to value his friends more than money. Judging from the way they are still fighting after sacrificing himself, his grad, he will be in the next game alone. Tenji also confesses a lie about dating Sawaragi Shiho, saying he lied about having romantic feelings for her, and that he betrayed everyone because he wanted to keep one person to himself, and that person is Yuichi. They asked for proof, and Tenji kisses him as they fall off the roof to their next game, where Yuichi plans to ruin the game's management. At the hospital, Yuichi counts his money. Yuka tells him something more important than money is friends. He wonders what she means by friends. She corrects him, saying she needs to call her mother now. Outside, he meets his new father, who asks if he knows the most important thing in life. Yuichi says money. Yuichi and Tenji wake up in a cave. Manabu tells them to stay there for three days to prepare for the third game. They have only one bottle of water for three days. Tenji says he kissed him to explain why he betrayed his friends. It's his second Tamadachi game. Tenji gives Yuichi a signal to cover his name tag. He blames Shiho for stealing his most precious thing. In junior high, Tenji had two close friends. They saved one million yen to start a business. Shiho joined them and caused trouble managing their funds. They decided to split the money and invest separately. They were kidnapped for the Tomodachi game, learning one had a 10 million yen debt. In the third game, Tenji lost and took the 20 million debt alone. Manabu said they'd take 20 million yen worth of his life. Tenji was released and told not to talk about the game. His friend used all the money for Shiho. Tenji confronted his friend, who later committed suicide. He investigated Shiho, receiving a threatening anonymous mail. Tenji decided to play a Tamadachi game to expose Shiho's lies. Yuichi realizes he messed up Tenji's plan. Tenji says it's not the case, and Shiho lied. Tenji explains their total debt now is 10-8 million yen. Yuichi is surprised and wonders why he knows. Tenji says after the second game, management reveals the total debt. Tenji asks Manabu to reveal their total debt again. Manabu says Group C's total debt is 10-8 million yen. Yuichi calculates their debt should have been 18.8 million, meaning someone lied about it. Tenji admits he also lied in the first game. His card said he could cut his debt in half, but now his real debt is 2.1 million yen. They think Makoto got the same offer and is probably at 200k debt now. They're still at 14.8 million debts. Shiho had 6.2 million debts, but if she didn't get the penalty for speaking, she'd be at 2.2 million, making the total 10.8 million yen correct. Yuichi notes if true, Shiho is quite the con artist, but he can't trust anyone. Tenji followed Yuichi because he wants to avenge his father and Tamadachi game is related to that. Tenji shows Yuichi the back of his nameplate with 2 1 million debts, now 4 2 million after revealing it. Tenji wants to follow Yuichi, even if he's just a tool. Yuichi says they have three days to think. After about 60 hours, Yuichi asks Tenji what friends mean to him. Tenji says he stopped thinking about it after his friends betrayed him. Yuichi wants Tenji to apologize to Makoto and Yutori, even if they don't forgive him. Yuichi promises to clear the third game if Tenji keeps that promise. Once three days pass, Yuichi and Tenji are released into a forest. They meet Sergeant Manabu. At the management, Riaiko Tamai tells Tsukino the third game is starting, facing her group. Riaiko notes her team will win as bigger teams have the advantage. Tsukino suggests a bet, and Riaiko agrees. Manabu announces the third game, Friendly Hide and Seek. Group C faces Group K. Each team chooses a hider, others are seekers. Manabu reveals rules, including switching teams. Tenji wonders about switching. Manabu tells him the consequences. They add Maria Mizuse to their team. Riaiko comments on Yuichi and sends Maria to watch him. Riaiko reveals charisma can win besides trusting your team. Group K has a genius. Juzu Katakura says he'll hide. Tenji decides to be the hider. The teams have two hours to hide. Tenji, Yuichi, and Maria search for a hiding spot for Tenji. 
They remembered the rules, Manabu explained. No violence, no moving the hider, and no moving once settled. Breaking these rules means instant loss and double debt. Manabu gives them cell phones to contact anyone in the game. Yuichi says he won't call unless it's an emergency. Tenji feels dizzy from hunger as they haven't eaten in three days. Manabu said there's food in the forest for the hider. They need to bring it to Tenji. Hiders have a give up button. They find a cave to hide Tenji. Tenji wonders if they can win against more enemies. Yuichi says they might not play fair to win. Tenji promises not to give up. As the two hours end, Yuichi leaves without explaining his plan. Tenji spends two days in the cave without contact. He wonders why Yuichi hasn't returned. As the enemy hasn't found him, he realizes it might be a long game. He doubts Yuichi betrayed him, but starts to think Yuichi is punishing him. He decides not to give up. Tenji calls Yuichi, but someone from the enemy answers. They say Yuichi plans to abandon him, blaming him for the second game. They suggest Tenji give up or die. Tenji trusts Yuichi and waits. Hayakuturu and Kei feel sorry for Tenji as Juzu has a perfect strategy, making their win impossible. Right before the third game, Juzu explains his strategy to win. He says it's not about luck, but friendship. They realize the forest is vast and finding someone is hard, even with two or four people. Juzu reminds them they need to bring food to the hiders. Everyone understands except Hayakuturu. Kei wonders if they need to rush to the food station, but he's not a fast runner. Hayakuturu and Chisato run to the food station while Kei and Banri find a hiding spot. Riaiko notes their leader's genius and their perfect unity. Tsukino agrees, saying they're more like a team than typical friends. Riaiko predicts Group K will win in three days. On the third day of the game, Tsukino asks Riaiko if the game will end, and Riaiko confirms. They just need to follow the searcher bringing food to the hider. Group K has four searches, making escape difficult. If the searcher doesn't move, the hider will give up due to hunger and thirst. Even if three people from Group K deliver food, two from Group C can't follow them all. Tenji hasn't eaten for three days, making it harder for Group C to win. At the end of the third day, Tenji sees Yuichi bringing food. Riaiko is surprised and thinks Tenji is hallucinating due to stress and hunger. Riaiko finds it strange that Yuichi doesn't try to cheer Tenji up or bring him food. Instead, he spends time at the food station and reveals information about his team. Riaiko wonders if Maria will continue to observe, despite acting as a member of Group C. Tsukino says Maria reported that Yuichi is even crazier than she thought. At the same time, Yuichi wants to join Group K. Riaiko can't believe Yuichi wants to switch sides. Tsukino thinks it's possible for Yuichi to switch to achieve his goals. Riaiko agrees it could lead to their victory. Tsukino believes the game will progress based on Yuichi's switch. Yuichi tells Group K he wants to switch to make Tenji suffer more. Switching can only happen at the forest center where the food station is. Most of Group K agrees, but K suggests consulting their captain. Yuichi mocks them for indecision. Hayakuturu tries to punch Yuichi, but is stopped. K calls their captain. Riaiko is relieved the game didn't end due to a mishap, but Tsukino wonders if it was an accident. K returns, saying their captain won't allow Yuichi to switch. Riaiko is surprised, but Tsukino thinks it's the right choice. Juzu trusts his strategy, asking them to proceed. He plans for Maria to switch if Yuichi persists, preventing tricks. Maria realizes Yuichi's plan is unfolding as expected. Two days ago, Yuichi told Maria they'd wait and give the impression of non-involvement. On the third day, he'd attempt to switch. If denied, they'd follow the other team delivering food. Yuichi praises Group K's skill, but changes his mind about switching. Maria recalls his plan to provoke the other group and find something specific. On the fourth day, K and Banri deliver food while Chisato watches Maria. Hayakuturu stays with Yuichi, who praises their team. Hayakuturu reveals his motivation for basketball. Yuichi questions why he joined the game and who's in debt. Hayakuturu goes to Maria, but she's gone. Hayakuturu finds her washing and retreats to avoid being misunderstood. Chisato decides to find Maria, while Hayakuturu chases Yuichi. They end up together near a cliff. Yuichi pushes Maria off, claiming it was an accident. Meanwhile, Tenji reaches his limit. He's ready to press the give up button, 
but realizes escaping his current pain means returning to his empty life. He chooses to trust Yuichi and bets his life on him. Regretting his inability to apologize to everyone, he's relieved he didn't betray anyone else. Opening his eyes, he finds Yuichi giving him water. As he eats and drinks, Yuichi reveals they could have followed him earlier if he brought food. Tenji wishes Yuichi had told him sooner to spare his suffering, but Yuichi explains he wanted to test him and see if he'd press the give up button. Not doing so means he'll trust Tenji again. Yuichi clarifies he doesn't distrust Shiho now, but they'll investigate upon returning. Tenji wonders how Group K lost, while Yuichi guesses they're trash talking him. Hai Kyuteru saves Maria from the fall, while Chisato helps pull her up, despite his initial reluctance. Maria, shaken, recalls Yuichi's plan to use her as a distraction. Yuichi explains how he manipulated Maria and observed Group K's dynamics. He sought the kindest person, Hayakuturu, and exploited Chisato's jealousy towards him. Yuichi set traps to disrupt Group K's relationships. Meanwhile, Maria thanks Chisato for saving her, surprising both him and Hayakuturu. Yuichi returns to the food camp. Hayakuturu argues with Chisato and announces he's joining Group C to Manabu. Tenji wonders how Yuichi plans to destroy the relationships in Group K. When Manabu confirms the third member is a girl, Yuichi decides to use her as a honey trap. Maria thanks Chisato for saving her life, but he insists she should thank Hayakuturu. However, Maria reveals she hates him for peeking at her while she was naked. Hayakuturu tries to explain it was an accident, but Maria insists he saw her in her underwear, making him apologize. Maria admits she lied and thanks Hayakuturu for saving her, charming him. Chizato wonders what would have happened if Hayakuturu didn't save her, calling Yuichi an asshole, but Maria fears his reaction if she speaks against him. Returning to the food station, Maria feels pain in her leg. Hayakuturu offers to carry her, making her regret ending up in Group C. Back at the station, Hayakuturu and Chisato inform Kei and Benri. Kei realizes Yuichi prolonging the game. When Yuichi returns, he claims Maria belongs to him, angering Hayakuturu. Yuichi pulls Maria's hair, but Kei tells Manabu it's violence. Manabu confirms it's only forbidden against opponents. Yuichi claims he can do what he wants to Maria. Hayakuturu suggests Maria joins them, but Chisato suspects a trick. They argue until Kei intervenes, suggesting they consult their captain. Yuichi believes Juzu's absence worsened Chisato and Hayakuturu's relationship. He expects Maria to decline joining them, causing Hayakuturu to hit Yuichi, escalating tensions. Yuichi plans to sway Hayakuturu to their side to win. Hours later, Hayakuturu tells Maria Juzu denied her switch. Chisato realizes another way to protect her. Hayakuturu agrees to join Group C. Yuichi approves and Hayakuturu attacks him, but Yuichi subdues him, announcing his move to Group C. He restrains Hayakuturu and suggests Group K discuss with their captain. Yuichi calls Tenji and informs him that he has convinced one of their members to join their group, leaving him with the task of making him reveal Juzu's location. Hayakuturu apologizes for being unable to protect Maria, but she appreciates his effort, fearing what Yuichi might do to make him talk. Hayakuturu assures her he's tough, but Maria believes Yuichi is capable of anything, even murder. Shocked, Yuichi overhears their conversation. Meanwhile, Juzu tells Kei that Hayakuturu switched sides as he suggested. Kei reassures Juzu and reminds him to speak politely to him in private. Riaiko is delighted to see Yuichi's surprised expression, highlighting Kei as the true genius in their group, controlling everything from the shadows. Yuichi questions Hayakuturu about not encountering their captain. Hayakuturu explains they were called back to the food station by K due to suspicious activities from Group C. K decides to call their captain instead of meeting him. Yuichi realizes K's leadership and calls him. Yuichi admits underestimating them, but K reveals they secured victory with Hayakuturu's switch. Yuichi panics, realizing their imminent defeat. Juzu observes Kei's contentment and explains their victory hinges on two factors, Hayakuturu's switch and the violence rule against opponents. Yuichi is stunned, while Kei expresses confidence in securing a clear win by locating Tenji. Maria grows curious as Yuichi panics. He explains the violence rule, realizing Hayakuturu has become a time bomb. Yuichi restrains him to prevent violence. 
Yuichi plans to hide Hayakutaru, but Chisato and Banri arrive, claiming it's too late. The next morning, Maria leaves, feeling bored. Kay approaches her, deducing she works for management based on her lack of hunger. Kay proposes Maria betray. Yuichi, promising her a more enjoyable experience. Maria agrees, intrigued by Kay's offer. Maria calls Yuichi, requesting Tenji's location to bring him food. Kay observes from afar, realizing Maria's betrayal. Yuichi's fury erupts as Kay confidently prepares to search for Tenji before nightfall. As darkness falls, Kei contacts Tenji, warning him of Yuichi's sinister plans. Tenji defends Yuichi, unaware of his intentions. Kei confronts him, revealing he found Tenji, and announces the end of the game. Manabu declares the game over, with Kei claiming victory for their unmatched strategy. Juzu stands over Yuichi after punching him. Manabu announces Group C as the winner of the third game, Friendly Hide and Seek. Kei is surprised they found the enemy hider first. Manabu confirms other ways to win. Juzu apologizes for considering the give up button. Yuichi, shocked by events, questions. Hi, Kyuteru. Learning everyone left, Yuichi decides to continue, knowing Group C's victory is assured. He calls Juzu to press the button, but Juzu refuses. Yuichi threatens Hi, Kyuteru, surprising Juzu. Riaiko watches Yuichi and notes his villainous nature. Yuichi plans to break Hayakuturu's finger to hinder their basketball skills. Despite Hayakuturu's resistance, Yuichi proceeds, shocking Juzu. After the game, Yuichi reveals the debt, implicating Juzu. Juzu confesses his family's debt and Kei's assistance, acknowledging his responsibility. Yuichi's manipulation shocks Juzu. Banri accepts their loss, acknowledging Juzu's correct decision. Maria wonders if Yuichi knew her identity. Yuichi admits to pushing Maria off the cliff as part of his plan. Tenji defends Yuichi's character. Yuichi and Tenji are released briefly. They find Yutori distressed over Shiho and Makoto's disappearance. Yutori explains they left after suspicion arose about stolen trip funds. Hanamiya accused Shiho, implicating Makoto. Yuichi realizes Makoto's actions led to his family's arrest. Yuichi understands the situation, and the group faces scrutiny from their classmates. Heading to Makoto's house, Yuichi and the rest learn that Makoto's father has been killed. The police then bring out Makoto, covered in blood. Makoto tries to explain something to Yuichi, but Shiho's father stops him. Seeing him, Tenji gets angry, but Yuichi stops him. Shiho's father explains it's better to not get involved, or they could lose someone important to them. Yuichi states he doesn't have such a person and threats don't work on him. Yuichi and Tenji wonder what to do. Yutori asks them what happened, and it seems they are now trusting each other again. Yuichi states he is done with Yutori as after the second game, she didn't even say anything to him and looked at him as a monster. Yutori states she got scared when they said he was a murderer, but waited to find out the truth. Yuichi yells at her that she is doing only what she is being told, and he hates such people the most. He states she is useless in the Tamadachi game as well, and is a burden. Yutori knows that, which is why she always does what they want her to do to not get in their way. Yuichi tells her she is a burden now and a stranger to them. Later, Tenji wonders if this was the right decision, but Yuichi explains that since lives are on the line, they should leave Yutori out of it and can take Yutori's debt on them. Manbu calls Tenji, telling him they will be starting a special Tamadachi game. He guesses that Yuichi is there as well and questions him if threats don't really work on him. He then sends them a picture of tied up Yutori, stating the rules are simple. They either show up or not. If they show up, they will have a terrible time. If not, then Yutori will have a terrible time. Yuichi will be playing the weak win game. Manabu explains that if two people suffer the exact same pain, the one with self-control won't scream, but the weak one will. People will feel sad for the weak one and go easy on him. If self-control is a disadvantage, then it's like the weak wins. Manabu asks Yuichi to come to a specific location alone. If he comes with someone else, he will never see Yutori again. Yuichi states that if they do anything to Yutori, he will kill them. Yuichi feels he needs to go as they involved Yutori in this, and that this game will be different than the rest. Yuichi arrives at the location and sees a group of guys with a man wearing a mask. The man takes off the mask and introduces himself as Kuroki, the make for this special edition of Tamadachi game. 
Kuroki wishes to explain the rules of the weak win game again, but Yuichi asks him to let go of Yutori. Kuroki refuses and cuts Yutori's shirt open, threatening to reveal Yuichi's secret. Yuichi is surprised that Kuroki may know so much about him. Kuroki explains that Yuichi will face three rounds of physical pain, and if he endures it, he and Yutori will go free. However, Yutori can choose to take the pain instead of him, and her suffering will be less severe than Yuichi's. Yuichi cannot speak while Yutori decides, or they both will suffer. In the first round, they will be punched by Goriki Kun. If Yutori chooses herself, she will receive one hit, but if she chooses Yuichi, he will receive three hits. Yutori has five seconds to choose, and if she doesn't, Yuichi will be selected automatically. As the countdown starts, Yutori hesitates, but Yuichi signals her not to choose herself. Goriki then punches Yuichi three times. Kuroki proceeds to the next round, nail removal. Yutori can choose Yuichi, and he will endure three nails removed. Yutori cries and struggles to decide, so Yuichi decides to take the pain. Kuroki removes three nails from Yuichi. Yuichi questions why Kuroki is their leader and wonders if there's any good in him. Kuroki explains that being the strongest doesn't make one a leader. It's about intelligence, courage, and loyalty. For the final round, if Yutori chooses herself, she will dance naked, while Yuichi will gouge his hand three times with a knife. Yutori struggles to decide, so Yuichi chooses to endure the pain. Kuroki mocks Yutori for her weakness. After the game, Yuichi reassures Yutori, explaining that she's not to blame. He apologizes for involving her and comforts her. Yuichi asks Kuroki to play a game for 10 million yen. Kuroki agrees, and Yuichi proposes rock paper fingers. If Kuroki wins, he gets 1 million yen for each person present. Yuichi's hand is bandaged, limiting his options to rock and paper. As the game begins, Kuroki hesitates, but eventually agrees to play. Kuroki believes he can't lose. If he uses rock, it's the safest choice, but to beat it, Yuichi needs to use paper. If Kuroki uses paper and Yuichi can't use scissors, there's no way he can lose, but at best, it's a tie. Kuroki asks what happens if they tie. Yuichi believes they won't tie, but if they do, the game will end with no penalty. Kuroki thinks Yuichi expects him to use scissors as he intends to tie and use paper. However, he won't use scissors even if they have a chance of winning. Yuichi surprises Kuroki by not using paper, and instead, he throws scissors. Kuroki is angry and orders his men to teach Yuichi a lesson. Suddenly, Tsukino and the Tomodachi game management enter and restrain everyone. Yuichi notes that Tenji's timing was good. Tenji explains they arrived earlier but weren't allowed in. Tsukino faces Kuroki, suspecting him of impersonating the Tomodachi game. Tenji called the real Tomodachi game, and Kuroki acted worse than the real one. Tsukino decides to take Kuroki with them. Yuichi reminds Kuroki that he lost the game and owes him five fingers. Kuroki tries to stop Yuichi, who proposes to cut one of Kuroki's fingers or pick one of his friends to replace him. Kuroki refuses, and Tsukino stops the game as Yuichi passes out. In the car, Tsukino explains to Kuroki that Yuichi's plan was to use scissors all along. Kuroki realizes he fell for it and didn't lose anything. Tsukino points out that he revealed he had no brains, no guts, and he would betray his friends easily. Kuroki's men no longer respect him. In just one game, Yuichi destroyed Kuroki's connections. Tenji and Yutori try to wake up Yuichi. Riaiko orders emergency transport for Yuichi. Tenji intends to stay with Yuichi, but Maria suggests they help Makoto, who needs them more. Makoto has 500 million in debt, and participating in the next game may save him. Maria wonders if Tenji and Yutori will choose money or friendship. Yuichi awakes and tells Tenji to go, as they cannot just leave the game before finding the truth. Yuichi says the essential thing to him isn't money but friends, he then faints. Tenji says he will go, Yutori says that she trusts Yuichi, and since he trusts Tenji, she will follow. Tenji and Yutori walks into a courtroom with Manabu who then announces the fourth game, Friendship and Guilt Court.